Hello and welcome to another standard game play video. Today we're taking a look at another 5 color Niv Mizzet deck. This time we're building around Niv Mizzet Supreme. This one was actually included in Aftermath, but I wouldn't blame you if this is the first time you're reading it. This 5 mana 5-5 five five has flying and hexproof from monocolored, so a bit more useful in standard than the other Niv Mizzet's hexproof from multicolored. And then each instant and sorcery card in our graveyard that's exactly two colors has a jump start. So now with the latest expansion, we actually actually have some useful multicolored cards that we can jumpstart with niv -Mizzet, including a sweeper. Ill-timed Explosion is pretty versatile. For mana sorcery, it lets us draw two cards, then we may discard two cards. When we do, it deals X damage to each creature, where X is the greatest mana value among cards discarded this way. So sometimes it's just a four mana draw two, sometimes it's a four mana draw two, and then wipe the board after discarding two. Sadly, cannot just discard one card, we are forced to discard two but it's nice to have a sweeper that we can also get back later with niv -Mizzet. And then we've got some other multicolored interaction with Lightning Helix, of course, dealing three and gaining three, the perfect card for a control deck. And then a No More Lies, a counter spell that counters unless the opponent pays three, so kind of like a mana leak, but this also exiles the card instead of putting it into the graveyard, so that's a slight upside for the additional color. And then we've got some more interaction with Molten Collapse, can destroy a creature or planeswalker, occasionally destroy a non-creature non-land permanent with mana value one or less, don't have a ton of ways to enable the send, but maybe if we draw and discard with an explosion or with a Celestis we can enable it, and then maybe take out a Kumano for free. And then there's Assassin's Trophy, just a versatile answer that can also hit some of the opponent's lands for instance, so a nice answer to creature lands or to maybe mess up the opponent's mana base. And then at 3 mana we've got our first domain card. Since we are playing 5 colors we may as well include kind of the domain package. The tri lands are important to fix our colors so we can cast Niv in the first place. And then we've got some payoffs such as Leyline Binding which can be a 1 mana answer. We've got Herd Migration which can fix our colors early on by getting a basic and gaining 3. And later in the game actually turns into a legitimate win condition making 5 3 3 beast tokens so that can help cross the finish line. And then at Shadow Prophecy a card you may not have seen before, a 3 mana instant, and if we have the full domain we get to look at the top 5 cards of our library, select 2 to put in hand and we lose 2 life, and the rest ends up in our graveyard, or we can maybe still jumpstart them using Niv Mizzet's ability. And then the Celestis can also help us ramp and fix our colors, maybe cast a turn 4 Niv Mizzet already, and then by switching between day and night we can easily draw and discard and gain more life, and since we have so many instants that we get to keep up at instant speed, it's pretty easy to pass a turn and let it switch to nighttime. So the Celestis is also quite nice. And that covers the entire main deck. Our mana base consists of lots of tri lands to enable domain. And then we're focusing on lands that can help us enable turn two, no more lies or lightning helix. So we can actually interact on turn two sometimes, which is why we have mostly just sky colored dual lands. So we can uh, cast those multicolored spells on turn two. And then a few more dual lands to play later in the game. And then of course some basics to search up with herd migration. Don't need basic forests because if we're getting herd migration to find a basic we already have green mana so that's not really necessary. So yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay we're on the draw this hand's uh, got a few issues can't actually play Leyline Binding on turn two can't even discard migration on turn two so it's kind of a slow start and then once we do get our third land down we have one removal spell and then we're kind of just spinning our wheels, not really interacting with the opponent in any significant way. So unless we draw some card draw spells early, this is probably a little too sketchy. Well, this one's not very good either. Without green mana we can't actually do anything. Alright, we'll try this one. can actually... No more lies on two, prophecy on three. I don't think I can keep Niv. Question is, do we keep the card draw spell, Helix, or the land? And then we have to get rid of Mountain so we can actually cast our spells. All right, let's try this. Not an ideal start, down to five. But at least we can cast our spells. Up against the red-white, another prophecy. Well, at least we've got shields up on Helix and no more lies. War Leader's Call and Cavern Naming Humans, so we're not going to get many opportunities to counter creature spells. 
So may as well counter that one. Prophecy gets to dig three cards deep. And Evangelist to play. That's a good one. Pretty resilient threat. So Binding is not a bad answer, neither is Ill-Timed Explosion. Just grab both. So we could play Celestus, but then I can Binding. Could still Helix the Evangelist. Yeah, I don't hate that idea. And then they'll get another Bant, but then we can set up the Explosion. Warden is uncounterable. So I could Helix it before they can tap three creatures, but they're likely going to attack with Evangelist. And a Recruiter. Okay, so we'll let that trigger and then Helix the Evangelist. And then Explosion to wipe the board. Then get rid of our counterspell. Plus islands. Two damage is enough. And we've got a one mana binding available. Plus another card draw spell. So for a mulligan to five, we're doing okay. Recruiter is going to make a pair of knights. think we need to exile one of them. And then if we can find niv Mizzet to kind of stabilize us, that would be nice. Still need a lane to cast Herd Migration. That could be another good one. Okay, so I could pass to let it switch to nighttime to get an extra life. Most of my plays are instant speed anyways. And then I think I'm fine playing the Proving Ground out. And then in response to the Celestis trigger, we want to cast a Prophecy. Find Binding and no more lies. But the Counterspell is not great here, so I might discard it. And a Herd Migration, perfect. So keep the Binding. And then next turn we can cast Herd Migration. Inspector resolves. Opponent's got a one card left in hand. And it's a Gleeful Demolition. Alright, let's just binding the uh, token so they don't get their 1-1 one -one goblins. They can still sack it to draw a card. But that will buy us a lot of time. No, opponent lets it go. So they do want to still cast a recruiter here. Alright, so we'll take a pretty big hit, but at least we're not dead. Gain a life. And herd migration could stabilize us. Ill-timed explosion could also be worth it. Although I do need to draw into a spell that I can actually uh, discard, since I don't want to discard herd migration. So it might be better to cast a Migration and then hope to draw into a 2-drop that we can discard next turn to wipe the board while keeping our beasts. But if they draw another Recruiter, I'll be forced to make some trades. Get to untap. And Headquarters a draw. Well, we have options. I guess we just cast the Explosion and see what we pick up. Otherwise we can just draw 2. That's the beauty of it, so yeah, just decline since we can't discard anything. And then we're gonna end up cycling the headquarters. Might want to consider holding some lands to jumpstart with niv Mizzet if we find it. Could also play a land, activate Celestus. Which gains us a life and still lets us loot. 
Question is, are we gonna attack here? I don't think so. Don't want to give the opponent infinite time to string together a Knight Errant to Convoke, but at the same time, we're at 7, so... Epicure puts us to 6. And it looks like they might have another Gleeful Demolition. Nope, just uh, discard and draw. And Epicure down to 5. Prophecy puts me to three, but a Helix can now gain us some more life. That's nice. So let's start here. Find Herd Migration and a land. Maybe send in one Beast, and if they double block, we can kind of get them with a Lightning Helix. Opponent takes it, and then question is whether to play a land or not. I think I do. Evangelist is kind of a must answer. So next turn, if I were to attack with everyone, our opponent will have to block. Otherwise, Helix can finish them off. We can also cast another Hurt Migration. So I'll start by cycling. Find a trophy. That can also answer the Evangelist. I think I do want to use up my mana. Yeah, so what happens if I trophy, Evangelist, attack all out? Opponent will have ample blockers. So they're gonna block something. I'll be able to make five more beasts on defense. And have a Helix to gain three. I think that keeps me alive unless I top deck another recruiter. And another trophy. So, attack all out. Opponent does line up some blocks. Damage happens. So I can cast Migration and then, yeah, hopefully Helix keeps us alive. We're not that on board. Opponent discards and draws. Is this a Knight Errant with Convoke, maybe? And they're deciding what to tap. So they keep the Flyers, hoping to find another Recruiter. They actually found it. But we should be alright with the Helix. Yeah, they found a way, but uh, luckily for us, it's not enough. And we have them on the way back. So, a very close game, but yeah, this was a Mulligan 2-5, remember? So glad we got there in the end, even if we didn't get to see niv Mizzet in action. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, I think we've got a Keeper. Can cycle Herd Migration to get black mana, and we've got all the turn to interaction we need. And a Duress, yeah, that's about as effective as it gets against our deck. Now they know how to kind of set up their next few turns. Maybe play around or counterspell, take the helix, or if they have resilient creatures, take the counterspell. Actually goes for the herd migration, so they are on the mana screw plan. Well, at least we've got our interaction. Opponent names bats, and the bat we can just helix. No more lice also wasn't gonna work. So they get to see the Collapse. And next turn we could just draw two with the Explosion to try and hit our land drops.
opponent passes, and Shadow Prophecy is still missing black mana. So we'll draw two. And there is another herd migration, okay. So next turn I could get a swamp, play it, and still prophecy. Okay, opponent can now have a look, maybe take migration once again. Maybe they want to keep us from black mana. Takes a counterspell now. Okay, so... Get swamp. And now we've got four out of five basic line types, so we get to dig pretty deep. Mirex we could potentially answer with an Assassin's Trophy as well. I think for now the plan is to hang on to Herd Migration. And then Explosion to draw two. Do we want a Leyline Binding? Molten Collapse kind of does the same already, so I think I prefer the land. There's Niv. I think we wait to play Niv until we can at least protect it with a No More Lies. So for now, we'll draw two again. Might have wanted to keep up a Battlefield Forge so we can maybe cast a, a Leyline Binding, but that's alright. Opponent makes a 1-1. One, one. I wouldn't be surprised if our opponent's playing the 5-mana Sweeper that can exile a card from our deck. So that could be somewhat concerning if they deal with Herd Migration or with niv -Mizzet. But at least we've got lots of win conditions in hand. Cavern names Phyrexian. Okay, so... Play Proving Ground and pass, I think. Or we could play Niv since we have a second. It's not a disaster if it dies. So plenty of cards in Graveyard we can jumpstart. Do they have the end of turn edict? That would get around the axe proof from Monocolored. But I'm just making a 1-1. Possible they have other spot removal in hand that doesn't work. Gix's command, that'll do it. So now the question is do we hurt migration or replay Niv? I think we hurt migration for starters. And then we can play Niv with a bit more mana available. And then I want to consider holding some lands in hand as well for Jumpstart. Another command's not going to be very effective against a bunch of 3-3s. And yeah, there's a deadly cover-up. I was kind of afraid of it, but here it is. So we'll see if they target Herd Migration or Niv-Mizzet. If they strip both win conditions, then we're kind of out of uh, ways to close out the game. Opponent does take Niv. So we have one Herd Migration left to win the game with, basically. Yeah, that's it. That's gonna be tough. And then I guess Lightning Helix could get there, but... Yeah, I mean, I think we have to just cast Migration, hope they don't have another cover-up in hand. It's not like a counter spell is going to help when our opponent's got a million mana. And our opponent explodes, so luckily the last herd Migration goes a distance on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a pretty clunky opener. Can't even play a 1-mana binding since we're missing blue. But I guess we can cast a Molten Collapse. 
So we're really just hoping for an untapped land to cast uh, Prophecy on three and kind of keep the ball rolling. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll give it a shot. Start with Garden on the off chance that we can play a one mana Binding on turn two. On the draw, this would probably be too slow, but on the play, it's worth a shot. Put into red black, not doing much. Sadly, missed our land drop. But we've got a binding available, so we can still use up our mana. Deep cavern bats. I guess we can bind, doesn't matter, since we've got two of them. Could also just untap a molten collapse, in case we don't hit our land drop. Alright, that works. And then next turn we'll have Prophecy and Binding available at instant speed. Preacher will happily take out for one mana. And then we can still Prophecy. So we're starting to pull ahead. Tenacious Underdog is fine. Make that two. And what do we find? Definitely want to land. And then could pick Lightning Helix. Sure. Now it's still a bit risky to play Niv if our opponent has an Edict effect to make us sacrifice it. Um, so we might be better off just going for Helix and then Shadow Prophecy. Or maybe an ill-timed explosion to wipe the board. But we can still use it as a draw to later. Yeah, how about we just pass a turn. And Gix, alright. So now dealing with both underdogs is a bit more appealing. Or we can just Lightning Helix Gix. Which is a pretty clean answer. And then we can still Shadow Prophecy. And then keep binding for maybe a Shieldred if that shows up. We do take six plus another two. But then we should be in control. All right, so. A land herd migration is an option as a way to eventually take over. Still have another lightning helix in hand. Yeah, that seems fine. And a trophy. So we have answers to larger threats if those show up. Could be a good time to just uh, explosion, wipe the board. We'll be able to make some beasts soon to stabilize. Could also play Niv, keep a binding. Still in trouble if they have like a Shieldred's Edict or Liliana. So I think I prefer the uh, ill-timed explosion. Take it from there. So I can discard land and maybe one helix. And then we still have our removal spells available. Deep Cavern Bat to have a look. I guess we want to Lightning Helix the Bat. They get to take a look at our hand. Maybe get an attack in with the Restless Vents or Underdog. If we run on tap lands, go for herd migration. If not, I guess we could try Niv. Don't have a counter spell available, but yeah, I guess our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a little sketchy with only three basic land types. Binding still pretty expensive. No blank for Shadow Prophecy. Take a mulligan. Okay, this I can keep. It's kind of tricky to decide what to put on the bottom. Herd Migration seems good to get our mana sorted, set up niv it. And then it might be better to keep Lightning Helix, even though I could keep up No More Lies on turn 2. Maybe it is still better to keep the counter spell. it's just that Lightning Helix, if we're up against, let's say, Red Aggro, is nice to have as a way to pad our life total and later get back with Niv. Alright, if we're up against a Convoke deck, I'm happy with a Lightning Helix too. So, play Garden so we can also set up our Hurt Migration next turn if needed. Frontliner, and that's it. Nope, there's a second main demolition, ouch. Well, at least I didn't have a Knight Errant to convoke. Now we could Molten Collapse, but there's no one creature I really need to deal with. So we're probably gonna set up our Hurt Migration, and then hope to draw our Ill-Timed Explosion, basically. For now I can get Maybe a mountain. Epic here is fine. And another frontliner. So our opponent is down to one card in hand. Alright, so keep a blinding helix for now. Okay, maybe target the creature they try and pump with a frontliner. Oof, recruiter, that's uh, probably game over here. So if we still had our counter spell, we might have been able to counter it here. Yeah, I guess we deal with the Recruiter. And still take a million. Well, ill-timed explosion would have done it here, but we couldn't find it in time. Alright, that's too bad. Let's see if we were close to drawing into it. Shadow Prophecy might have been able to find it, but... Alas, GG's. I'll do the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, keepable hand. We're looking at a turn 3 prophecy with a full domain. Facing Sultai, some sort of graveyard synergy deck. Okay. Can keep up our counter spell as well now. And the exile part could also be relevant against a graveyard deck. If we don't need to cast it, we can prophecy and then next turn go Celestus, keep up no more lies. So it's gonna be something pretty good. Insidious Roots. Yeah, that's uh, probably their key card. Now we could also Assassin's Trophy it. But I think I just uh, counter while I can. Since if we trophy first and then counter, they'll have more mana to pay for it. And then we can still play Celestus, keep up Trophy or Helix. Or we might end up uh, discarding Herd Migration. Oh, 
Chalk Outline. Okay, that's a good target for Trophy, I guess. For now, we'll just hurt Migration. And what do we want? Let's go with uh, Swamp. So this triggers when one or more creatures leave the graveyard. So I don't have to destroy it right away. Switch it to nighttime so we get to draw and discard. And uh, may not need Lightning Helix as much. Even though it kind of offsets the life loss from Prophecy, can always get it back later with Niv. And by keeping our land we can Instead, draw more action spells with a prophecy. Dream Thief will surveil. There's a chance they mill a creature that they can eventually get back to then set up the outline. Put on milling a squirming emergence instead. So no need to trophy anything. Prophecy finds lots of goodies. Binding, a pretty versatile answer for one mana, and then maybe we want the ill-timed explosion to draw to. Let's see if we can find Niv. Our opponent seems to have disconnected. Seeing double Shadow Prophecy end of turn is uh, pretty demoralizing. Especially when we get to dig 10 cards deep, essentially. So ideally we find Niv, we could even play it and then pass with counter spell backup. Found a nice set of lands instead. Okay. And herd migration we could also cast. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. And then we can keep explosion to maybe deal 2 to each creature to wipe the board. If we discard Trophy, that could work. So if our opponent makes a few detective creature tokens, it's not the end of the world. Otherwise, we can uh, start applying some pressure. And maybe use Explosion to just draw two cards. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and... Yeah, I mean, this hand is gonna maybe suffer against aggro a little bit, but Herd Migration can set up our Shadow Prophecy nicely. And if we lead with Headquarters, we could leave up maybe a Lightning Helix or No More Lies on turn 2 as well. Now we could just play Rafine's Tower, or maybe even better, Xander's Lounge. So if we had Leyline Binding, we could cast it for one mana here. Opponent on Esper, and there's Leyline Binding, Speak of the Devil. But uh, I'll set up a Shadow Prophecy instead. Virtue of Loyalty makes a token. Okay. So yeah, having double Prophecy and kind of an Esper mid-range or control matchup is nice. For now we'll take two. And let's see if they've got a counter spell. Fairy Mastermind instead. Yeah, that's a good one. Luckily this doesn't technically draw any cards. So find Lightning Helix and Celestis could be good. Could also grab Trophy as an answer to their enchantment. Let's go with uh, Celestis. And then now we could main phase, just go Celestis and then Helix the Mastermind. That looks good. If they have a cut down, they could cut down their own creature to deny the life gain. But our opponent lets it go. A 
and then the Celestis will ramp out our hurt migration ahead of schedule. Probably don't need to discard it anymore. Celestis triggers. Do we see another Mastermind response, maybe? So we can just play a tap tower and then cast a Shadow Prophecy end of turn, still have Binding available, and next turn cast Herd Migration. Opponent cast a Virtue, so that's a good target for Binding. I think I still prefer dealing with the enchantment as opposed to the creature. Could have also cast Prophecy first, see what else we find. And that might change our play. But yeah, another binding, and then explosion just draws two. Don't think we need to deal with the token. Niv Mizzet's a nice pickup. But for now, let's just make some beasts. See if our opponent's got a sweeper. They do not, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, our hand seems keepable. We've got four basic land types, so we can cast a two mana binding on turn two, and then explosion as our board wipe. So we've got single target removal, and we can handle go wide decks, and eventually land Niv Mizza to try and take over. Turn on Frontliners, or opponent on the Red-White Convoke deck. Okay, could also play Mountain. Not gonna binding the Frontliner. A Warden is potentially worth it, but still dies to our Explosion most likely. So I'll just hang on to the Leyline Binding. Now we can Prophecy. And a Knight Errant Convoked. Okay. So they get some value. Finds just a Recruiter. End of turn prophecy. Finding Helix is probably a good one. And then just an untapped land is probably fine. Could also go for Celestis. Although next turn we're gonna explosion. Turn after. I guess I wouldn't be able to play Niv with my current mana. So maybe I'm better off with a Celestis. And then I need to discard probably the Leyline Binding here to wipe the board. Or we could uh, discard Explosion, keep Binding. But I think we're going to need a second Explosion. And then what lane to get rid of? Maybe Headquarters. All right, and that's enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and I think we can keep. Can uh, cast our two interactive instants as early as turn two, and then Niv Mesa to eventually take over, facing black white. I'll keep up our counterspell here. Is their opponent just on Esper? I'm glad to be hitting our land drops. This might be a bit of a staring contest early on, as both players have hands full of removal, but no creatures to target. The longer the game goes, the weaker No More Lies becomes. A 
Could cycle a Xander's Lounge. Seems fine. Herd Migration we're probably going to want to keep as a win condition. So... For now, just pass the turn. Emperor... Yeah, I think I'm happy to just counter, even though Lightning Helix can sort of take care of it. Our uh, counter spell was kind of running out of time to be effective. Another migration. So, if I play Niv, I can't quite keep up uh, No More Lies afterwards. So we'll maybe wait another turn. And then we can Helix. Sure. Now they could have their own No More Lines in hand, of course. So, got plenty of migrations, maybe fire one off. And get Spell Pierced, ouch. And Danik is back. And, uh, yeah, we could try and have Mizzet now. Probably keep land in hand for jump start. Alright, opponent forced to counter with make disappear. So it doesn't feel too bad. I think I still hang on to the garden, even though we could eventually play migration and helix in the same turn. Might end up uh, cycling it to find more action. So our opponent seems pretty threat light. Yeah, let's just jam another herd migration. Could see another spell pierce, I guess. It's gonna be an air tie to counter it instead. At least we get to draw. Alright, I'll play the wastes. And a wedding announcement is next. That's a good one. Especially once they start drawing with it, so... For now... Casting the Herd Migration could be bad if they have another answer. As they get to kinda... run away with this wedding announcement. If I Lightning Helix, they could technically protect Ertai with a Plaza. I think we just jam Migration. That resolves. Opponent attacks with both, so possible they have a sweeper or maybe a wandering emperor, which is a reason to block with more than one token. I guess I'll just block with all four. Opponent draws, and we get to keep our tokens. Okay, get in, and then could see another Wandering Emperor, I guess. Can't quite counter it. But Binding could be a fine answer to the wedding announcements. It's gonna be a go for the throat on one of them. And they take the rest. Alright, I'll uh, keep my eyes peeled to maybe use this Leyline Binding. Of 
opponent cycles. I think we just let this announcement go, keep binding for something else. And then I can cycle garden if I'd like. And an ill-timed explosion can draw too. Could also just go for lethal here. Molten Collapse the token. Attack, if they try and Wandering Emperor I can counter it. And then Helix can go face. Seems worth a shot. If they have another go for the throat instead, they can stay alive. Damage happens. And I think we go for it now. And there we have it. Awesome. Managed to out-control Asper midrange. Sweet. Alright, so we got to see our 5-color niv mizzet deck in action. Didn't actually close out too many games with niv mizzet jump-starting cards from the graveyard, but in testing that certainly happened a few times, and uh, otherwise we still have Herd Migration as our author finisher. So it's a deck that's somewhat similar to the classic Domain Ramp decks, but instead of closing out games with Atraxa, we're trying to close it out with Herd Migration and niv mizzet We also get to play with a different set of cards instead of ramping. We're controlling the board a bit more with counter spells and removal, so it's a bit of a different playstyle, which keeps standard interesting at least. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.